Here we are. The life cast continues uh, with a Canadian icon, uh, with the Order of Canada, uh, all around amazing guy, and uh, obviously uh, competing for best beard in the country uh, with Paul Merks from Paul Merks Concerts as well. This is Fred. Yeah, Pennant. dear dear Paul, I haven't thought of him for for years. I know he did some promoting for a number of gigs in the earlier day, but I, I've not seen him, so I didn't realize he had a. I thought I was competing with David Letterman, but uh, Paul Merck's fine. Yeah, Paul's got it going on. He was a, a guest a couple of weeks ago on the on the Life Cast, and uh, and um, I was on one of those tours I was doing for him, where I met you for the first time. So right. welcome, welcome, Fab. and thanks thanks for making the time. I, I, Pleasure. I, I sort of kept it a bit of a secret to everybody what was happening, but uh, I let the the cat out of the bag to a handful of yeah. people that you were coming on, and um, as it were. It stirred the pot uh, for anyone that uh, that was excited that uh, to uh, to listen in on this. So, everyone that's excited, welcome. This is Fred. So, Fred, uh, this is a series I created called the Life Cast, which basically uh, kind of breaks down the journey and, and sort of life and what you've been up to. But um, you told me uh, when we were chatting that you've moved from the peg and now you're on the island. So, uh, I mean, what, how long? Yeah. Yeah, things have uh, have have altered here. I I've uh, uh, I was divorced uh, about ten years ago now, and I remarried uh, about five years ago, and my and my wife was from BC. She uh, she was raised in Delta, just sort of south of Vancouver, and uh, and, and always had wanted to come back to this part of the world. And oddly enough, Fred Penner's place was based on on uh, on on BC. The set was designed by. Lawrence Collette, who was a, a designer with CBC, and he uh, and and he had gone into the into the woods or Stanley Park, wherever, and had imitated much of the the entire set. Basically, is imitated from uh, or in, influenced rather by the uh, by the rainforest and by the environment around here. So, it, it, it in an odd way, it's sort of like coming home for me as well. But we we bought a house in uh, in a in a little town close to Comox and Qualicum Beach, that area, about two years ago now. And, and we officially moved in about a year ago. Beautiful part of the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I love very much. have a lot of friends over there as well. Um, I'm sure not, you do. You were talking about your, um, uh, you know, the intro for Fred Vanner's Place, which I have to tell you is probably, as a kid growing up through that time, is probably one of the best intros to a kid's show I've ever seen. <laughs> because you, you're going through the forest. So that's Stanley Park. And I, I noticed that's probably the uh, down in Vancouver on the beach, it looked like. Yeah, the uh, the opening it, it went through a few incarnations along the way, but uh, but the main one was uh, some shots from um, off of Burrard by uh, by the uh, by the Deer Pacific Ocean in in that coast, and then and then there's one point where I uh, where it shifts to uh, Lake Winnipeg to Grand Beach in that that area. So because the show the show was taped both in Winnipeg. And Vancouver pretty much split down the middle in quantity of, uh, of episodes. So it's, we had a, it's magical. A, a, a bit of Winnipeg, bit of BC. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, it was it was as a kid and anyone that's some um, say from America. I know you're on Nickelodeon down there, but some some people that are not familiar with the show, um, it was great. Fred going through the forest, and then you had to climb through a log to get to. Fred Penner's place, and I loved that. I, I mean, that, that was the con. Then that that was my concept. The, the 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 word bird, who was iconic in the show, was uh, was from a, a writer in Toronto who was was part of that. But uh, but but the log was my idea, and I was pretty pleased with that for sure. And what a, what an idea! Because what you know, uh, four to four to six year old or three to eight year old kid, you know, wow, you. So he's walking up and he goes to this log and it was, in essence, it was your Oscar the Grouch can. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sure. Because everyone wondered what was going on down in Oscar's. What's happening? Yeah. yeah what's yeah. happening down there? And then here you are with the, with the log and it's like, well, if you go to this log, where is this log located and how do we get there? I'm like, I, I want to go there. I want to see Fred in this place. And it was, it was really iconic. It's something that, um, um, almost everyone who's at, who <laughs> I told that you were coming on, you're like, you got to ask him about the log. Yeah, ask him about know, the log. That's so I know a, a lot of people along the way have, have sent me messages saying that, that they, they are, are have an, a, an appreciation for, for nature because of my show. And they're always looking for the log and it's, it's, it, it was 
pretty cool that I was able to to do that for you know for almost a thousand episodes over thirteen years. What an what an opportunity, certainly. Amazing. That's um, how did that come about? How did, I mean to actually get the show? I know you yeah um, you were performing quite a lot, but um, how does it come about where they come to Fred and they say, "All right, now you get your own show." Uh, exactly. There's there's a bit of a blessing here. I it, it was 1985. I'd done the first uh, my first record, The Cat Came Back, in 1979, 80, and uh, then worked with Rafi for five years, and you know, and and, and built my touring my touring chops and uh, three more four more albums over that time frame. So by the time uh, the mid '80s came along. I, I was already pretty well established. I'd been playing the festivals. Uh, CBC, unbeknownst to me, had been following my my work across the country, and they were looking for a replacement for the Friendly Giant. and uh, And they had seen what I was doing, and uh, and really liked my energy and how I was approaching things. So they uh, basically Dodie Rob, who was the head of children's television back in the in mid '80s. She just called me out of the blue and said, hi, uh, you know, this is Dodie Robb, head of children's television. We've been watching you. Would you like to do a TV series? And it was, you know, uh, sorry, could you, re- ding, 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 can you repeat that? Uh, a TV series. Sure. Well, uh, what, what do you, how do you do this? And then uh, they said, well, what would you like to do? You know, they, they had no concept beforehand. It wasn't like, you know, we would like it to be natural. We'd like a log. You know, they, there was nothing to do with that. They uh, basically put it completely in my lap. And, and I did, as I generally do when any creative thing comes along, is I, I do my soul searching. I go inside. I start thinking and trying to figure out what it is that I would like to share with, with an audience, you know, a, adult or, or children. And uh, and and in my in my childhood, I, I was I was a scout and a cub for a while, and uh, and going into the into the woods and and marking our our paths. You know, you 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 get some twigs on the ground and you turn it into a uh, an arrow showing what direction was going. So if you got lost, then you could find it again, or or you would mark the side of a tree, or you know, do something to give an indication of where of where you were in case you got lost. And so that was the that was the inspiration for the opening of the show, was you go around this tree, you follow this this uh, this fence, you you see that red rock, you balance on that, you go, you know. So it was all about trying to define an environment that that the viewer could could watch and listen and feel comfortable with. Ultimately, uh, ending with the re- reveal of the hollow log making sure that nobody else was watching just just us and you crawl in and the, the the real idea of the show was to was to make it a comfortable environment a protected environment for the viewer to uh, to watch so I, I came back to, to CBC and said here's here's my thought I, I don't just want to you know a, a door that you knock knock open come on in I want it to be a special kind of place. And uh, and so they started working on that idea, and uh, and before long we had we had the concept, and props were being built, and contracts were being signed, and away we went. Did you know what you didn't want? Uh, y- well, yes, I I did not want it to be condescending. You know, I I wanted it to be to be a, a, a an engaging environment for for the child that, that just made the viewer feel comfortable you know and to feel like, like they were they, they were just in a uh, you know so so it's not it's not flashy fred Pinner's place was anything but flashy but it it gave the viewer a a sense of calm i'm hoping um and my my approach to to doing television to doing any kind of video work is uh is clearly connected with with the idea of the one child and that 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 concept is when you're looking at a camera you don't think of it as going out to thousands hundreds of thousands of people who knows uh but 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 you look at that camera and imagine it's the one child and then you that's how you you bring your energy down to that point of reference you know and it's like brent hi hey it's nice to see you come on in i've got something to show you all right, yeah, I'm, coming, just over I'm here. coming right now. You know, then I guess that's uh, yeah. Well, uh, well, exactly. I'm on the way. Yeah. 
Yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and that kind of feeling of yeah. <clears throat> you and I are in this together. Yeah. You know, it's, and, it's, uh, it was quite something to watch and, and educate. And I think you engage the kid. I mean, I put it on for my kids. Uh, I know yeah. I, uh, I brought them up to Whistler to see you years and years ago. Oh, um, right. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and did, wow, you know, and, you know, I just remember Samantha being like the log, <laughs> like, you know, it's just, it was just this, you know, the thing. And it's amazing what kids um, gravitate to and what they yeah. get educated by. And, and anyone listening, I think that you should um, try to find as many old episodes as you can online um, because I think they all hold true. Uh, you know, I don't think there's anything topical per se. I think you just covered off the, you know, getting everybody um, educated. And I think it's amazing. The, um, the, the atmosphere at the time and sort of what was going on. I mean, there was a lot for can Canadian kids. There was a lot going oh, on for my, for my age group. I, yeah. I mean, I'm, a, I'm born mid seventies. So for me coming through there, obviously we had Sesame street. We had read along poker We had Mr. Dress up yourself. We had Sharon Lois and Bram. Uh, there was so many, uh, there were so many different yeah. ones. It was looking at that kind of scenario. Uh, obviously did you, ask yourself like where you're going to fit in or was it an instant success or did it take some time to kind of carve out your space in there? Uh, you know, what was uh, not, like? not really. I was, uh, I, again, very, very fortunate with the way it, the way it unfolded, um, you know, doing, doing the cat came back album, which was inspired by, I, I was doing a show in, in Winnipeg. Uh, it, it was a, a stage presentation of, of, uh, of the story of Blunder, which, which was on the, you know, where, where the Goblin song arrived. Uh, that was a story that I did on the first album. And I uh, w- was doing the show with, uh, with my, uh, actually my ex-wife was part of that. And, uh, and, and a doctor and his, his wife approached me after the show and, and asked if I had a record. And because they liked my voice, they liked my music. And I said, no, no, I hadn't. I'd only been doing, because I, I had been doing uh, a, adult more or less entertainment in the in the 70s with uh, you know with with bar bands and you know just just working on my chops and a lot of acting during the 70s as well you know just gaining an ability of uh, of, of being able to express myself in many different mediums and uh, and and so the fellow asked if if I had a record and I and I said no and they said well we 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 would like to sponsor you know an album for you and they basically gave me a blank check how much it would cost it ended up being about eight grand in 1979 and uh and that led to to the cat came back and then that led to working with Rafi and then it just it just flowed very very quickly and I think a, a big part of my approach was because I had worked with special needs children in Winnipeg in the uh, in the 70s as well uh, from from uh, from psychotic to to schizophrenic to uh, out of the full range of disturbance, and I had a sister who was born with Down syndrome. Mm-hmm. So all of these pieces together, and my desire to to bring something positive into their into their world, uh, helped me understand the true value of what music can do for for a child, you know, particularly. And uh, and and because I had that level of philosophy going into it, uh, I didn't feel in competition with anybody. I was okay. I was working hard. I was writing a lot of songs. I was I was uh, building a, a very strong career, and the gigs were selling out, and festivals were coming. I mean, it was as you said, the the '90s in particular was one of the hottest decades for for Canadian entertainment. And uh, and it just it just kept you know blossoming all that time until until the industry sort of caught on that they actually could make money from children's, mm. and then and then it the, the whole attitude sort of changed and then people were putting out the kitty pops and you know and you know as as I was saying what I didn't want Fred Penner's to play, place to be was condescending, and all of this really condescending stuff was coming out and I, I felt really disappointed that people were not holding on to or that performers were not holding on to that that sensitivity of what you really could bring into a child's world that that didn't have to be lack a lack of look at me the color oh look at all that is so much fun and you know j- just losing really the that sensitivity that is there in the child that needs to be nurtured uh and that and that that doesn't have to be 
you know, the, the fast every, every 15 seconds, another hit, it is possible to connect with the child on a sensitive level. If you, if you approach it from that angle. You um, built it out based on obviously experience that you were talking about. Was there anything um, that you drew from for inspiration outside of your own personal, you know, work that you had done in the past? Like, I really like the way this show flows, or I I really like this, or was it really just you the whole way um, uninspired and and just, these are my ideas. This is what I want. And I'm going to do this, this way. Um. Yeah, my I mean, my influence is when I was uh, was a young, a young, a young boy, we didn't we didn't have television until I was about 10 years old. Yes, I'm that old, Brent. <laughs> um, uh, so, yes, we didn't have TV to work on, but but we but I had radio and on radio, there were some of the best storytellers that I've ever heard. And so I, I would, I would, I would flip on my little crystal set and you know shove the thing in my ear and and listen to these these beautiful beautiful stories and and the nice voice and engaging with good m- musical background behind it. So I I uh, I I did want in the beginning to to bring that kind of of intimacy, you know, through through storytelling, and uh, and and it didn't have to be just just a spoken word. But music could absolutely be part of the storytelling. So when, when, the, when the cat came back, fell into my lap, it was, oh, this is the perfect song because it has so much story to it. It has the adventure. It has the excitement of what's going to happen to this critter. And, and, and I think that's part of what has truly engaged with the audience is they, uh, they, they love that quality that, that the cat came back has. Uh, so I, 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 those were my main influences. Mm-hmm. Certainly as I got older, musically, um, I, I had a huge range of influence from the classical and swing era that my parents got into to the early boy bands and rock and roll with my older brother and sister and, and then into the folk scene in the 60s for me. So I had probably the, the best range of of sound that I could possibly imagine. We met over music. Obviously we met at a concert. I think yeah. we met at a heart show, I believe in Winnipeg. Oh yeah. Uh, right. There was heart. And I was through for a few times yeah. um, growing up Winnipeg. And that's, I mean, I'm, I know I got a lot of friends from there and there's a lot of musical influence from there. There's a lot of bands that have come out of there. Uh, of a lot of musicians moving there too. It's, it's quite the place. Um, th- th- I mean, what was, what was growing up Winnipeg like? in the cold and, and all the rest of it. I mean, obviously you're on the radio, you're uh, listening to the radio yeah. and pulling inspiration and then, and then uh, designing out this show. But um, I always, um, you know, Prairie boy, I mean, <laughs> Prairie boy, that's, that's a tough, that's a tough, that's tough to grow up in, you know, in that, it's, that environment. I, I, well, I, I mean, I was, I was born and raised in Winnipeg. So, so mm-hmm. I knew, I knew the weather. I, I actually love, snow i love the weather i love the range of seasons that was always my sort of default comment about winnipeg is is uh yes it's cold in the winter but it's glorious in the in the spring and the summer is second to none and the fall you know when uh, that's my my birth season so i love the fall so you you know you, you just deal with 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 a bit of bit of snow for for a couple of months and you know that that's fine but i i, I think what what was uh, inspirational about Winnipeg is, is when it did get cold, well, you stay inside, you hop in the basement and you start making music. You know, that isolation gave you a sense of, uh, of creativity, oddly enough. And there were, when I was growing up, there were so many great, great bands that were coming up. I mean, I, I went to school with Neil Young at Kelvin, you know, and, and the fifth was, uh, was happening and he was, he was going crazy. And the guess who were playing all the community centers and some of my biggest concert memories was going to see Lenny Bro and uh you know the the monster globally the the arguably the best guitar player ever and uh, and I and I was able to you know to sit you know like in front like 10 feet away from Lenny Bro watching him perform at different events and it was uh that was truly inspiring to see what a what a human being can do with you know with a couple of hands and a and an instrument it was a very, very inspiring time. There's quite a quite of a contingent of musicians from that town. Um, Ain't it true? And you, um, how's your relationship with them all? Do you still stay in touch with any of them? Do you? Is there just collective little like, 
well, you made it and you made it and you made it. We're all in this little secret society of Winnipeggers that, that broke out and changed the music scene. <laughs> Like, you know, uh, there's a whole bunch what, of them. What, what, yeah, once, once in a while, little, little connections happen. I mean, I've, I've had, uh, you know, lots of contact with the Guess Who over the, over the years when the MTS Centre opened mm-hmm. in, uh, oh, how many ever, ever many years ago that was. I was co-hosting the opening with Adam Beach. Yeah. Actor. And, uh, yeah, the actor and, and, and Winnipeg, Winnipeg boy. And, uh, and, and, uh, and as, as, as a as a host, I went around to all the rooms of the other performers who were playing, and you know, just checked in with them, see how they're doing. So I went and checked with Chantel Kreviazic was performing, and and uh, Burton Cummings was doing a solo that at that concert, and and he was he was freaking out. He uh, he, he 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 thought this was the end of his career mm-hmm. because he hadn't he hadn't been doing the up close and personal stuff yet. You know, and so we, we, we just talked talk for a bit and, you know, calmed things down. And, uh, and he went and absolutely killed 16,000 people with, with him, him and his piano. But, you know, so every once in a while, you know, some, some of those connections happen. And, and more, more often, the, the generation who grew up with me, you know, like, like, like the Landreth boys, you know, Joey, Joey Landreth. And, uh, I mean, right across the country, the performers who were on my Hear the Music album from Ron Sexsmith to Alex mm-hmm. Cuba to the Good Lovelies, they, they all, I, I keep in touch with those folks because we were, uh, well, we did a project together, first of all, but we established a really beautiful friendship over that time. And, you know, and, and people like Al Simmons, who was my, really my, my mentor in the 70s, we were in a band together for four years and, uh, and, and he and I still maintain contact. And it's, it was a, it's such a vibrant, beautiful time of life. And, uh, and I, I learned so much from, from the people that I was with and, and, you know, and it was pretty, pretty powerful time of life for sure. The uh, current time obviously was uh, affecting a lot of things. People going online, creating podcasts. Here we are uh, doing yeah. different, different things, but um has it changed for mm. you? I mean, obviously, I know you were playing a lot. I love the story you told me about how you were, <laughs> how you're huge at colleges, and I want to go back to that. But right now, are you making music for you? Are you making music uh, for the kids? Are you what? What? What kind of space are you in right now? Uh, well, I'm 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 playing guitar you know, almost almost daily. I've uh, I've got this beautiful old Gibson. Uh, Gibson Hummingbird guitar from the 50s that I, I bought for 225 bucks and coincidentally from Burton Cummings' father. So that's, oh. so that's, that's become my, my go-to instrument. And, and I've, I've just been, uh, because I haven't been working on a specific project, I'm just, I'm just playing and letting my emotions carry me. And uh, some really lovely stuff has come out. I'm, I'm hoping that that, no, I know that it will turn into uh, songs, possibly another album before too long, but um, but my music is is getting more complex. My my uh, my chord progressions, my dexterity is still there, and uh, and I'm I'm just loving making music and and doing occasional um, online concerts. You know, I, I've done many of those over the over the last number uh, number of months. But I, mm. oddly enough, I'm not missing. I'm not missing the road so much because I've, I've been on the road for 45 years. I mean, since 70, 72, 73, more than 45. And, uh, and I'm, I'm not missing, you know, hopping on a plane and renting a car and getting hotel rooms and, you know, and, and driving to a space and doing that. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying what, what this uh, semi-retirement life has to offer. I mean, many of the, the dates that were, were, were set up for my, 40th anniversary cat came back tour, which I was in the middle of when, uh, when COVID hit, those are, have been rescheduled for, for the fall of 2021. So I, mm-hmm. I am looking forward to get back to that, but, but I'm, I know I'm 74 years old now. So I think it's time to, to uh, rest on a, a, a few of the laurels that are here and, and, and finding, maybe, finding time to chill. Maybe go back to school, you know, well, why not get your chill? law degree? <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on it. Um, yeah, well, I'm with Fred Penner. Uh, just really uh, happy that you made some time today. Uh, come on, um, your story um, inspires many, many, many. You've also got 
the single greatest piece of merchandise, which I've brought with me. Oh. Uh, you're gonna have to. T- everyone's <laughs> gonna have to tune in to uh, to the YouTube version of this. But this is the single. <laughs> that's the single yeah. greatest T-shirt I've seen by a band in the history of music. It's just it's, a silhouette of Fred with the hat with this beard that he's been working on for many years uh, that he's perfected. Um, cool. Uh, I mean, do you still sell this version of this shirt? Oh yeah, I do. It's, uh, uh, you know, so your, your listeners, your viewers can go to fredpenner.com. In fact, we, we just opened up my online store. Great. So I've got, uh, I've got CDs, a couple of books uh, and lots of t-shirts. Um, what's next for you right now? This is the life section. So what is the life of hmm. Fred? What is the life of Fred Penner like right now? Well, uh, my, as, as we said, my wife and I have settled into our, our half acre of, uh, of glory here. Uh, we're, we're in, in winter mode, so there's not a whole lot to do. I, I'm just in the process of finishing off a, uh, a, work, uh, a work play place, our studio. Uh, it's an old garage that we had converted. And, uh, and I've, I've got one corner that's that I've got, I, I just had a, a butcher block table put in and there's going to be bookcases and that's going to be a, a creative place for me that I'm hoping to get my computer in there and actually sit down and focus in on all these chord progressions that I've been building mm-hmm. and actually turn them into songs. So I'm, I'm still staying very creative. My, uh, my wife and I do a lot. She does a lot of the cooking. So I'm eating, eating very well. I'm, uh, I'm minutes away from a beautiful hiking trail just around the corner. So it's all about staying healthy and, uh, and creative and, and uh, getting into more meditating. My wife is very much into that world. She's been, uh, she has her accreditation in MBSR, which is mindfulness based, excuse me, stress reduction is the, is the name of that acronym. I, anyway, my, my wife has taught me uh, some really important lessons about how, meditation works and it's and it's not about sitting in a particular pose legs crossed it's all about sitting comfortably uh you don't have to worry about putting your, you know just hold, hold your hands in a comfortable place focus on your breath allow the thro- the thoughts that are in your mind to to run through and and it just brings you for any amount of time for five minutes ten minutes whatever makes sense just focus on your on your on your breath for that amount of time. And it's good for the soul. It really is good for the being. So that's, that's what I do, you know, several times a week, at least. Before I let you go, I have a question for you. Um, okay. One of the most common question I'm getting about this was uh, your relationship with all the, the performers at the time. So Mr. Oh, Dress yeah. Up and Sharon Lewis and Bram, I, I, there's the crossover episode with you and Mr. Dress Up, which is very famous, uh, mm. putting you guys together. So how was, how was the late, great Ernie Combs and, and, uh, and that er, Ernie, Ernie was fabulous. Uh, we, we, had, uh, we had several connections, good connections along the way. Um, Actually, I'm, I'm going to go go back to Sharon Wilson Bram, and then I'll, I'll I'll top off with Ernie. But uh, but, but Sharon Wilson Bram, and we were at many festivals together over the years. Uh, we became great friends. I you know I spent you know time with them when I was in Toronto. Um, unfortunately, I, I I I did perform on on the Elephant Show with them, and we were hoping to have them on Fred Penner's place, but that that never that never occurred. And I I do. I do wish that had, it would have been a lovely visit from them. But with Ernie, uh, I, I performed on his, his series. We had a lovely time. He's one of the gentlest humans that I ever met. And, uh, and when we were going to have him on our show, uh, two weeks before that episode, uh, his wife was tragically killed in downtown Toronto. And, uh, and so we, we sent him a message right away and said, you know, we, we're, we're happy to cancel. We're so sorry. We, all, all our love to you. And he said, no, that he really wanted to, to do the show. So he actually came, came on Fred Penner's place. And uh, we did two episodes, two or three episodes together. And, uh, and, and he, he just was, was inundated with the most love from the crew that I've ever experienced. It was palpable. People, people just sent out so much energy and, and beauty to him. So I, I, uh, I, I, I love Sharon Wilson Bram. I love, I love Mr. Dress Up and uh, he, he was an exceptional human being and, and just brought so much b- beauty into, into the world of, of children mm-hmm. and families. 
I have a great memory of him in uh, Port Perry, Ontario. I, I was oh, in there. Okay. I was in there, and he uh, in a it was like a we had a um an like, like an ice cream store there. Okay, and he was I guess just touring around Port Perry for, for the day, and uh, I was in in there. I, I think might have been maybe 18 or something or 19 years old. Oh, and yeah. uh, it was just when I was getting into promoting and I actually ran into, uh, I had ta- spoken to him on the phone about running some concerts for him back in the day. And then there he was in Port Perry, just randomly. And I said, Hey, you know, it's Brent. You know, we talked on the phone. He's like, Oh yeah. Yeah. And I, and I, I said to him, well, you know, this is a uh, pretty interesting that you're, that you're here. And he said, what did you like most about the show? And I just, you know, I just, I, I think I had said, I just like the way he broke things down and really, really put you there. Like similar to what, what you, mm. what you did, um, which is like, he would kind of describe what he was doing and um, it was just really cool. And so he proceeded mm. to say, he brought me over and he ordered ice cream as Mr. Dress Up. <laughs> And I remember just being like, what is going yeah, on? And he, he just did it for me at that moment. It was really just an amazing moment. And even though I was 18 or 19, whatever I was, yeah. he still brought that kid out and uh, it was fantastic. So uh, Fred, I, I noticed you did nice. this, you do the same um, with children uh, around the world and you inspire them all the time. I've seen you interact with my kids. I've seen you interact with others and uh, you were very loved. And I, uh, I can't thank you enough for coming on today to tell your I, story a bit and uh, join yeah. me for this. That's a, it's very sweet of you, Brent. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, and I did want to want to uh, just promo a couple of uh, quick mm-hmm. things. As I mentioned, the uh, the the uh, the merch store is now open on fredpenner.com. Uh, we we've done a number of um, of documentaries on the CBC Gem. There's there's one of a 45 minute one that's there now. Uh, the YouTube has a whole range of and there's episodes of Fred Penner's Place as well on CBC Gem. Uh, but Super Channel is airing on December the 4th, starting, starting then, a full 90-minute 90, 90 uh, version of the, uh, of the documentary. It goes, goes pretty deep into a lot of personal things, and you know, your, your, your viewers your, may be interested in that, but that's all the promo I got to do. Awesome. Well, Thanks, I'll uh, make sure we put it up there for everyone to watch. Make sure you tune Appreciate in, it. my friends, on uh, all channels, wherever you can find Fred, uh, online and all that <laughs> stuff. Uh, you'll, you won't be disappointed and you'll be very inspired. So thank you, Fred Penner. Thanks to everybody for listening to the Brenton on Tour Lifecast this week. And uh, we'll check you out next week. All right. Thanks. Great to see you. Thank you. Thanks, buddy.